Hey, it's Alan with Wicked Pecker Off-Road, and I just wanted to do a, say a 3,000 mile review on the Honda Talon, um, and go over some of the accessories that I put on there, and the ones I like and the ones I don't really care for. Um, the ones that I would do again, and the ones that I wouldn't. So, uh, this is a 21 Talon Live Valve. Um, has just under 3,000 miles on it. Um, when we'll just start at the, at the front here. Uh, the Bosman bumpers. Can't say enough good about them. Uh, whoever does Ryan's powder coating, he needs to hold on to him because these bumpers have taken a beating and it's held up wonderfully. Uh, the front and the rear bumpers. Uh, have the KFI 4500 winch that mounts right to the bumper. Um, from Bosman. Uh, it also has the Factor 55 Ultra Hook on it, uh, so I use only soft shackles with it. Uh, the next one I would probably do one of the uh, Yankum ropes uh, hooks that doesn't use this hook at all. You just bring the loop of the rope out and hook it over the edge uh, to do away with any metal at all in the recovery system. Um, the Super ATV flip-up windshield, of course. Uh, it's fine. It doesn't seal up the best in the world, um, but it, it works good to flip it open real quick and uh, does its job. I would probably, on my next machine, I'd probably go glass, uh, vented glass, but just for preference, I do a lot of cold riding, a lot of wet riding, um, but the, the windshield's fine. Um, the skid plates. Uh, obviously this machine is for rock crawling. Uh, go up to Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, mountains quite often. Um, 3,000 miles worth. And so I set it up with a half inch thick uh, plastic skid plates. I did the factory UTV main skid plate. Um, I love it. It just seemed like it had a little bit more clearance um in in certain areas and it covered a little bit more in the front and the back than let's say trail armor or uh, any other skid plates out there not a big deal uh the next one i'll probably just do a trail armor everything because i do have the trail armor skids on the uh, a arms and the trailing arms uh, i highly recommend those because i have bottom this out on many many of rocks and I still have yet to bend an A-arm which they would have bent many times over. Um, I have people following me that didn't have the skids on there and they bent their A-arms. Um, same trail. So yeah I highly recommend those. The next one I will probably go with the like I said the uh, uh, trail armor all the way around and also do the trail armor rock sliders. Um, that wrap all the way around to here. Uh, this doesn't have them. I do have the tree kickers, but I just like the idea of having that extra thick plastic there for stick protection coming up through. So the next one I will do the full wrap around. I may end up adding another bar here for a rock slider along with that, um, but I like, I like the idea of having that extra protection for sticks coming through. Um, I do have the Warhead Off-Road Tree Kickers. Again, can't say anything bad about these. They are extremely solid. They have been put to their test. Uh, if you can see it, there is scratch marks all over them. The bottom's completely raw metal. Um, they have done their job in protecting this. Uh, kept me off of rocks and trees, anything that come in and damage the side. Um, they have really been, been abused and held up very well. So hats off to, uh, to them for the uh, tree kickers. Um, keep going. I have System 3 uh, bead locks and System 3 XTR 370s and a 33 inch tire. Um, the reason I went with the 33s and they are true to size fairly. Um, if you go to the 32 inch tire, it has three quarters of an inch of tread. If you jump up to a 33 inch tire as an inch and a quarter of tread so that's the extra half inch of tread um, and I think it may be the only difference in them I think the carcass might be the same uh, as the 32 possibly don't hold me to that but that extra half inch of tread 
I have 2,500 miles on these and they still have more tread than a 32. Um, there's a lot, I do wind rock a lot, so there's a lot of paved roads around there um, that I have close to an inch of tread still on these. Um, they are a really aggressive tire. They do great in slick situations, in mud. Um, when you get into a big washout, they seem to hold their line really well and you don't slide down in. Um, I don't know, I'm not gonna get into tire debate on here, but for what I do, I really like these tires. They are a heavy tire though. Um, walk around here. Um, I have CA Tech high clearance radius rods um, for the bottoms and the regular, their radius rods for the top. Again, amazing powder coating, amazing workmanship. Uh, they, they look beautiful, they hold up great. Uh, also have their billet tie rods. Um, I never broke one. I did bend a rear radius rod, uh, the stock ones, and that's why I went to these. But I went ahead and got the tie rods for a fix it before it breaks kind of thing because I figured the factory ones were going to break with what I do. Um, also have the rear Bosman rear bumper. Um, again, great craftsmanship, extremely solid. Powder coating is great. Um, it's held up great. On the next machine, I'm gonna do an aftermarket cage, which will come down and it'll tie in. So I probably won't do the rear bumper. Uh, on, I'm gonna get a, a X uh, four-seater, or I'm sorry, 1000 R four-seater. In 2023, they're supposed to be coming out with that. So I'm really excited to get that. Um, down here, I have a, I think it's rugged terrain, has a thimble that goes through the hitch pin. And then this continuous loop rope um, I use all soft shackles for everything recovery that I can um, and that just keeps a hitch from sticking out and catching on rocks and catching anything that can just fold up so it stays in there all the time um, I do have a backup camera uh, this one I have is cam soda I believe don't really recommend it uh, I have it Wi-Fi to my tablet uh, Samsung Galaxy tab a 10.1 uh, that I use lifetime trail maps on. I keep all my music on that and I have this camera Wi-Fi to it um, Anytime I've really needed it. Uh, it hasn't done me any good So either get a better quality camera. I think dirt road designs has now a, a holder for the uh, a dedicated screen and backup camera um, that seems to work really well So I'll probably get that on the next machine uh, again. That's dirt road designs and um, the pack out mount M2B fab mount is aluminum uh, the, a lot of people go with the AJK off-road uh, triple wide mount which is a, a great solution um, it's steel powder coated and basically the same thing it bolts right into the factory locations um, these are the boxes I chose I do have my Wikipecker off-road uh, rotopax can mounts that are new um, this is with a one gallon can, this is a two gallon can. They're both the same mount, but you can also put a three gallon can on the mount. Um, they're on the website. Uh, I did rock lights and backup lights from Twisted Pro All Terrain. Um, they're in St. Augustine, Florida, veteran owned company as well. They're great. I did white for backup lights and blue for rock lights. Um, of course, fire extinguisher, you never want to leave home without it. Especially if you're <laughs> riding around me. No comment, Bobby. <laughs> um, again, the tree kickers from Warhead Off-Road. Um, I don't remember who makes the lower doors. I'd have to dig in and look that up. But it's an aluminum door with a panel that comes in from the back that's the color of the machine. These things are great. They seal up really well around the bottom. Um, keep the air out. Keep the water out. Keep the mud out. Uh, extremely good. I'm sure I haven't heard anything bad about any of the lower doors, the plastic ones or the aluminum ones. Uh, they all seem to do the job pretty well. This is a custom enclosure that I had made here locally. Um, with the new machine, I'm, I'm actually going to take it in and have them do a custom enclosure for it as well. Um, and I'm going to have those on the site for next winter is the hopes in that. I love this enclosure. Um, the windows zip completely out, unsnap, so it just leaves this little clear frame around here that you can leave in all year round, uh, but take the window out. Um, 
um, or you can fold them in like a Jeep soft window. You unzip it and fold it down and rest your arm on top of it. Works great. Um, or you just you zip tie them on. Uh, the next thing, the ditch lights are from Twisted Pro All Terrain as well. Um, they they were great. It's, again, it's a great company to, to deal with. So I'm going to go over the, some of the stuff from Wikipecker Off-Road that we have uh, that's on this machine. One is our new light bar. It actually isn't on the site quite yet. Uh, maybe by the time this video is released. Uh, we did a lot of testing with it uh, in Windrock last or two weeks ago. Um, extremely bright. I have it also for a uh, Pro R. Um, that was tested a few months ago. Uh, same bar, same wiring, everything, just different brackets. Uh, all works really well. This one bolts up to the factory cage, factory roof, and everything. Um, then the wiring harness, you put it into whatever switch you want. Uh, our heater is, of course, installed in this, and it works amazing. Our headlight kit um, with three inch pod lights, they work great. Go up to the this plug and play, they go to the factory switch. Uh, we have it set up where dim lights, uh, one of the lights illumin illuminates and with bright lights, all four lights come on. So extremely bright. Um, I have mud buster uh, fender flares. They're good. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about them. I have put these up against so many trees, so many rocks, fold them in time and time again. The bottom is chewed up a little bit from the, the big grips on the tire sometimes uh, getting caught between it and the tree kicker. But that's just the bottom edge, not a big deal. These, as you can see, there's some, some body scrapes and scratches. These have been scraped and scratched. They do sag a little bit. Some people complain about that. Um, Rock Blocks, I think, has a bracket already made on them so it doesn't sag as much. But these, uh, these do sag. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. I would buy them again. They're $220, I think, for the complete set. This is the XL set, or I think they're now listed for the R. The ones listed for the X um, are a little narrower. They all fit. It's the same body, uh, X and R. So if you want just a wider flare, depending on the offset of your wheels, order the ones for the R. They're the bigger XL uh, flare. If you order them for the X, they're gonna be a lot narrower. I think it's an inch or inch and a half in narrower. Um, that's about it on the outside. Let's uh, go around and check out the inside. All right, so for the inside of the Talon, I just wanted to go over a few things. The rear view mirror I have is just a cheap $20, $22 off Amazon. Uh, I've broken a few of these. Certain people's foreheads have broken a few of these, <laughs> including the guy holding the camera right now. My forehead's broken them. Uh, so. I had one mount on each side and I ended up with one in the center. Anyway, um, just a good cheap mirror. And our heater kit is installed. I did do the Hess i4 wheel drive bypass to get some of that bogging when you get up against a big rock and you're trying to slowly climb it and it wants to bog down. Um, I love the Hess i4 wheel drive bypass, but when I like it is just riding on the trails. Um, it's whether you're going semi fast in I say four wheel drive, but when you turn on that bypass switch, it engages the clutch for the front, but it doesn't uh, engage any of the, the readings from the speed sensors and it doesn't apply the brakes. So you basically have three wheel drive, you have an open front diff that's engaged with the switch on. When you turn the switch off, then you can engage your I four wheel drive and use it like normal. Uh, but as soon as you turn that switch on, it cancels out the I four wheel drive it's just like having the switch in two wheel drive with that engage. It's only the clutch that engages the front diff. So it's better steering control when you're in and on and off the throttle on dirt trails and stuff. Uh, so you have that little bit extra to pull you around. A little bit more control, I think, going down the trails in your driving, um, but you don't have to worry about the brakes locking up on you. So in normal trail driving, I leave it in, in the Hess i4 wheel drive bypass, 125 bucks, I think. I think it's a great, great thing to have for what I do. Um, but when it comes up to hairy obstacles, I still turn that off and turn on the i four wheel drive. Uh, it seems to do better. I know people are gonna say, put a locker in it, put a locker in it, but the only front differentials I've heard of breaking, people had lockers. 
Now that may be because the locker puts a lot extra stress on it, which is what I believe, or it could just be the people that put the lockers in are doing the most extreme stuff they can possibly do, and they were gonna break a front diff no matter what. So I don't know which the case is, but I choose to leave it. I have a winch. I'm not afraid. It doesn't take my man card away if I have to winch up an obstacle. I typically don't, but it's happened a few times. And uh, yeah, I'm fine with it. So another thing that I put in to test out, and again, I don't know who does it, but the soft ride switch. Um, it goes in and does something with the settings, I'm not real clear about it, um, in the computer to control the shocks, to make them looser. It's supposed to, you turn it on, your uh, warning light comes on for your shocks, and it's supposed to make the ride really soft. Not recommended for um, hard turns or high speed, but it's supposed to do that. I honestly have not felt a difference. I've turned it on and off a dozens of times haven't felt a single thing so i'm not saying it doesn't work but i'm not gonna do it again um yeah it couldn't tell anything 125 bucks again not a big cost but if it doesn't do anything why do it and that was the soft ride switch again i don't, i forget who makes it um somebody recently had come out with it on on one of the facebook groups and i bought it tested out thought yeah if it makes a softer ride it's great um been, uh, I have the uh, RAM mount for my tablet. Uh, it's a Samsung Galaxy A 10.1. Um, I really like it. I did went overboard and did the inch and a half mount. Uh, mount it right there to the grab handle yoke. Uh, I can move it up and around whether there's somebody riding with me or not. Um, I love it. it. Works great. The uh, obviously the gauge relocation cluster from Wicked Becker Off Road and the switch panel um, that fits in the place of the old gauge panel is one that we we produce um i also did the heel switch plate uh the metal one that i'm not sure who makes that it's like 40 bucks online that was the first thing i added to it um i love it i absolutely love it if you didn't when i didn't have it the throttle is real jumpy and some people are gonna say learn to drive your machine you don't need it well you probably don't but i like it so i put it on it's my machine uh, highly recommend it anyway. It's 40 bucks. Can't go wrong. Uh, something else I really like is from Dirt Road Fabrications. It's this new shifter that he put out. Um, Andy Settemeyer. Sorry, Andy, if I pronounced that wrong. Um, started making these, and he has T-handle shifters and these pistol grip. I thought it'd be neat to put it on there. I didn't have a problem with the factory one, but I thought it'd be pretty neat just because the way it looks um and i really liked it so it was 45 bucks i grabbed one put it on there something i didn't think about the little bit of leverage because the old handle came it's pretty short it was down here um the added leverage of that couple extra two and a half two 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 and a half inches makes all the difference in the world for this thing going to low now instead of feeling like i'm really framing on to get in low this thing you just pull it down there and bam you're in low um, it doesn't take any effort at all to get it in there. Um, it seems to engage better because of that little bit of extra leverage. Anyway, I really like it. Andy, great job. Um, highly recommend that. Uh, he has some other products too. Like I was saying, the uh, backup camera mount. Uh, I think it mounts somewhere up here. He also has a PB3 tuner mount that goes to the, the bolts here on this windshield. Um, I don't have a tuner at all, so I don't have that. Uh, but the next rig, I'm going to do his backup camera system uh, at Sturt Road Designs. Somebody else uh, that made something pretty amazing for this. Let me get back out of here, out of the inside. Aaron Early with Two Track Fab made a drive shaft for this. When the original drive shafts, the only option you had was to go to the dealer and buy a whole drive shaft or try to put, go to the auto parts store and get some U joints and tack weld the caps in. Anyway, Aaron went above and beyond and spent countless hundreds, thousands of hours in a machine shop and came up with a full billet yoke, full billet rear, a bigger shaft that is thicker in diameter than the original one, bigger U-joints, spicer U-joints, greasable, lifetime warranty. Uh, it's a little pricey what you would think, but if you understood fabrication, it is a deal. Um, 
but he is one of the nicest guys to work with and did an amazing job in that shaft. And I didn't have a problem in my shaft until I replaced it with his at about 2,000 miles, maybe 2,200. I didn't realize how much noise my stock shaft was making until I put his in and went down the road. Then I went, where, where did that noise go and what, what? Apparently it was a drive shaft. Never knew I thought it was just a standard noise. Um, anyway, I, I feel extremely confident now that I'm not gonna have one of the U-joint caps spit out like a lot of people do. Some people in 50 to 100 miles has a, have a U-joint cap that ejects um, because of the machining process and the factory shafts. Anyway, that is a huge, huge upgrade uh, for peace of mind for not breaking down the trail. Um, I just want to go a couple of other little things that uh, we put out. The light bar, the headlights, uh, the emblems, uh, the Honda emblems on the sides and the back. Uh, it's also Wicked Packer. The dash plate says Talon here. Oh, something else I didn't go over on the inside. The EXE shift plate. Uh, it's an aluminum shift plate. Uh, it's fine. The only thing I would probably go back with a CA Tech shift gate. Uh, from what I understand, the low range, I, I believe it's on the other side, and it comes in a little more, and it goes down just a little bit further. So it gives you about a quarter inch further down of engagement travel. Um, but the EXE one works fine. Either way, I think they're 40 or $45. Uh, and I did do the upgraded Jeep CJ shifter boot that you just, it's real easy. You pull that plate off, pull center console out, pull that plate off, four bolts on that and you take the Jeep, I think it's 76 to 79 CJ transfer case shift boot. Uh, find one of those online, 20 bucks or so. You cut the bottom ring off, it has a metal ring on there in the rubber part, you cut that bottom ring off, you set it in there, you trim it out a little bit, and it slides over top your, your shifter. Um, pull the shift handle off first, of course, slide it over the shaft. And then you bolt that shift gate back down on top of it and it keeps all that dust and heat and stuff from blowing up through there uh, that was one of the first things I did and amazing amazing so I highly recommend that um, and again our pack out uh, fuel can mounts there's another fuel can on the site as well that we do these mounts you can order with just the plastic base plate or included with the basic aluminum mount um, plenty of other mounts and you can mount the one two or three gallon rotopax cans on there um, oh, something else I didn't mention. The double shear brackets I put in the rear radius rods from Bosman Designs. Um, they're a single shear, so you just have a bolt sticking out there and the radius rod bolts on there. It's pretty weak from the factory. These little black brackets here, the double shear brackets, um, not that expensive for peace of mind. It makes it double strong. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend those. Oh, another thing I did, the shock on the uh, sway bar upgrade these are from speedway motors they're the uh, brushed stainless option you can get them in black brushed or polished um, if you look back in honda talon hq facebook forum i have a parts list in there of what bolts and washers and everything to get to put these on there but they're about a hundred dollars a pair um i don't like the idea of completely taking off the sway bar because it, it just, I think it overextends it um, and makes it where your axles could be in too much of a bind when it drops out. But with that installed, now I wouldn't do it on the non-live valve because with it installed on this live valve, if I get into high speed stuff or on the highway, all I gotta do is turn on the live valve and it stiffens the suspension right back up. And I don't, I don't even notice there's a difference in the sway bar. Uh, the end links aren't still in there. But that gives me an extra five inches of travel on each end. So 10 inches of the sway bar moving. Um, it seems to articulate a lot better on the rocks um, where it's not so rigid and banging, uh, where it'll literally articulate better. Um, and I haven't had any clearance issues or anything. Uh, I've heard of people putting them on an X model. This is their R, of course. And they say they don't have any problems with it either. Um, again, I don't recommend doing a non-live valve unless you're 100% off-road and you're doing everything under, let's say, 25 miles an hour. Uh, if you're doing any high-speed corner and stuff, you're going to have a lot, of, a lot more body roll 
and I don't recommend doing that for safety reasons. Um, yeah, that's about it. The PRP bags for here. Uh, it's the only bag I have. Um, they've been on there a year and a half, or this one has. Uh, came in a, a set of two. Just recently, though, uh, after many miles on the interstate towing in and many miles on trails, I did lose this uh, one strap here and I have a hole in it now. Um, but other than that, they hold up extremely well. I could have that sewn back on or have another brand new one still in the package because I only put it on the one side. I'll probably just put that on there. Um, but a good quality bag other than that tearing out. And that was probably because it is whipping on the on the rack on the back on the truck where I haul the side by side a lot on the top of the rack that you drive up in the back of the truck. So it's up there in the wind. It's not protected at all like on a trailer. Um, so that probably was the demise of that. I still recommend the PRPs and good bags. So that, I think, is about it. Can you think of anything else, Bobby? We nailed it. My cameraman, Bobby, thank you very much. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these reviews on different machines and on the new machine when I get that, um, the four-seater, I'm gonna do reviews of factory machine, all the upgrades I do as I do them. Um, so please like and subscribe the video That'll keep me uh, going on it, keep me motivated to keep making them for you. Uh, and all of our other installation videos, you can go to our website, wickedpeckeroffroad.com to see all the products we have. Uh, we're getting more and more for Can-Am and Polaris all the time, some Jeep parts, but the Honda Talon is the heart of everything. Um, that's what we started out with, so that would, is what we have the most products for. So anyway, keep looking uh, on the website and like and subscribe to the video and we'll talk to you later thanks